Welcome back to my series on trying to find this rather loud engine knock in this 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser. It's got to be a connecting rod, 100% for sure, absolutely for sure, it's a connecting rod sound. Well, you got to be careful when you say absolutely for sure, 100%. One guy put, well, it's absolutely 100% sure that it's a valve issue with this particular engine. And I found out that he wasn't even talking about this engine. He was talking about a diesel engine. So <laughs> I'm not saying it's not a connecting rod, but you got to think about this. You know, what end of the connecting rod? Is it the lower end that connects to the crankshaft? Is it the upper end of the connecting rod that connects with a piston pin? Could that be bad? You know, when you listen to the sound, like I said, there's a intermittent noise that occurs, kind of a click, 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 click every once in a while. And the rod knocks that I've heard in the past tend to be more consistent, like clunk, 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 not clunk, 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 clunk. What we're going to do next, you know, we already got in there with the borescope and looked around. It's gonna be really hard to see the camera in this bright sunlight, but we're gonna see if we can spot anything. We're kind of focusing right now on the top of the pistons. We'll go down each cylinder, see if we can see any damage on the top of the pistons. Number one looked okay? Okay, number one looked okay. All right, so what did that borescope tell us anyway? You went right down the line, number one to number six. What did you see? Whoa. Did you see anything conclusive? I don't see any like really damage, you know, by the valve or something. But what about all that yellow stuff? Take a look at this. Now we saw this yellow stuff show up around. Yeah, something the... weird, the most you find in this number three. Could that be the reflection from the light in the camera? Hard to say. <laughs> Are we looking? Hard to say. You know? Hard to say. Yeah. So we still don't know. We still don't know. We still there's, don't there's know. Nothing uh, like we say. Okay, we find a problem here. All right. Because it's no visually, it's very hard to say. Yeah. You know, either we had to go open it up more, or go underneath, take the oil paint off, and then check it out. You know, from underneath, uh, there's something that give you more. Okay, so at this point, what do you think it is? Well, I still believe, you know, that either, you know, the piston, the you know, piston. this thing, yeah. or, you know, the crankshaft bearing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely not outside the engine. No. Or, or we would really have to eat some crow, wouldn't we? If we yeah. discovered something like a loose exhaust manifold. You know, people keep saying, well, check the flywheel or check the flex plate. We did that right away in no, part one because we've experienced that. that. So it's not that. There's no, something, that, no. something going on inside this engine. We saw a lot of carbon build up. We saw carbon along the edges. We didn't see any particular damage to any of the pistons. And of course, we did the compression test earlier and that confirmed there probably is not a problem with the piston or the valves per se. Maybe the valve seat is dropping down, but when it comes back up, it closes. So if that were the case, of course, a compression test would not show that as a fault. So that could be a possibility. We still have a few possibilities out there. We're going to take and do a test to determine if we've got any looseness in one of the connecting rods. This won't tell us whether it's the top end or the bottom end, but it will show us that we have indeed a loose bearing on one of the connecting rods. I'm going to take one of these quarter inch extensions we're going to put it down the spark plug hole. We're going to get the piston about the center position on the upstroke. And then Gerson's going to move the crank back and forth. And if the rod's tight, we're going to see this extension move very quickly. If there's a delay and it doesn't move, then we know we've got some looseness in that particular rod. So let's see how this test works out. Hey, so Gerson, let me ask you this. How come you get to lay down on the job? And I always have to stand up. Because you're the boss. <laughs> okay, that's what I like to hear. Uh, Tell us what you got there and why you got it. You I got, got a 30 millimeter socket with a half inch. You're using a breaker bar, right? Breaker the breaker bar, bar is, uh, we need that because we got to be able to go back and forth quite quickly. 
and so a ratchet isn't going to work. Yeah, that's right. So you're that's going to put that up in there. I'll put the rod down in the cylinder, and then you're going to move that back and forth quickly so I can see whether we got slop in that connecting rod. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and start with number three. And we want the piston coming up on compression or exhaust stroke, you know, coming up the cylinder wall. Watch the end of the rod. Okay, go ahead and move it back and forth. I'm going to hold on to it because I might be able to feel. Okay, there's no play in that one at all. Let's do number four. Okay, go ahead. Hold on a second. I'm going to hold down on it. I'm picking up a little noise there. Okay, go ahead and go back and forth now. Hear that noise? Okay, I'm going to go back to number three. Okay, go ahead. No, still getting noise. There's no slop. I'm not getting any slop. Try number four again. No, nothing there. Okay, let's come up to number two. Okay, yeah. Okay, bring that. You're going to have to rotate the engine and get that piston up a little higher on number two. Okay, I know it's not going to be easy without a ratchet. Let's see if we get this coming up. Okay, stop there. Okay, now, now rotate back and forth. Okay, there's no play in number two. Let's try number one. Okay, we're going to have to go down a little bit, so go ahead and, and move the engine. Okay, that should be good. All right, now rock it back and forth. No, nope, I'm not feeling any play in number one either. Okay, let's go back to number five. We might as well finish this up. Okay, go ahead and rock the engine. Okay, no play in that one. Okay, I'm going to have to use a shorter rod here. Okay, go ahead and do number six. I can barely reach it. Okay, stop. All I've proven here is that we don't have an excessively loose connecting rod. Man, we're not getting anything really definite, but I've got an idea. Maybe, uh, maybe we can put this up on uh, Craigslist. Just say it needs a tune-up. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not getting a feel of looseness through that little quarter inch extension. But you're hearing a sound. I'm hearing a clunking sound as you rock that engine back and forth. Yeah. So what do you think it is? We've already checked the torque converter flex plate. You know, we've seen problems with that before, and that's not a problem. We've checked the counterbalance pulley. It's not that, okay? We've had the valve cover off, no broken camshaft, no bad timing chain, uh, no tensioner problem, uh, and all these other things like motor mounts and loose bolts and everything. We've checked all that. Yeah, we checked uh, all the minus problem now. Okay, now we have so to go deeper. we have to go deeper, right? Yeah. But are what are we doing today? We're just what? Just burning calories. <laughs> 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 That's all. <laughs> we, we need to go more and we're open just, it up, and then we can see more. But okay. Burning we're just, right uh, yeah, just burning <laughs> calories. Do you want me to get down there and do that while you check? <laughs> well, or do you, you think? want to lose some calories? <laughs> oh, you can go. Out <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, good. Um, this really is kind of a mystery. You remember that Mercedes diesel we got a number of years ago? The guy came and. And he said, hey, I, it's diagnosed with a rod knock. Remember that thing drove in here, it was going clang, 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 clang. And you and I both thought it was a rod knock. And yeah. he wanted to sell the car, so he sold the car cheap. And, and we started to take the engine out. We were going to replace the engine, remember? And, and you yeah. says, hey, kid, there's a loose bolt down here. And sure enough, the torque converter flex plate bolts were loose. And we also found out it was cracked. Yeah, and true. that was making a knocking noise, exactly like this knocking noise, right? 
$50 fix it. <laughs> yeah, $50 we fix Yes. $50 <laughs> so the point we're trying to make here is you have to be a little careful when approaching a knocking engine that you don't jump to conclusions and be very careful if someone else tells you you need a new engine, okay, or you need a complete rebuild. So that's the purpose of this video series. I want it to be educational. I, I probably would have already removed the engine and torn it down, you know, if it were just my car, but that's not the purpose of this video series. I really want to go through everything. I want to make sure that if you end up with an engine that has this kind of a knocking sound, that you check it thoroughly. Don't just take it into a mechanic and say, fix it. <laughs> Because <laughs> he'll put a whole new engine in it and maybe it's only a cracked torque converter flex plate. So you're saying we have to go deeper. Yeah, that yeah, means yeah, we got to pull the pan, maybe pull, pull the, the engine. Pan, go a little more deeper. Okay. Maybe the only way we're going to find out what the problem is. So that's a lot of work. I mean, if we got to pull this engine out and take it apart for the sake of this mystery, is it worth it? Well, just so you know, if that be the case, then we may not be able to wrap this video series up real soon. But at least in the next video, we will pull the pan off and get in there and see if we can get to any of those connecting rods or whatever and get kind of a final check on this noise before we pull the engine. Let's go home.